Perhaps not the epic that some people would hope to kick off day two. I mean, I would say that given we have G2 versus Fnatic at the end of the day, we're kind of slowly ramping up. And if we're going to be honest, we're starting quite low yeah. at the beginning of the day. Both these teams have struggled so far this split. And I think we need to set expectations that this could be a number of different things. This could be a slow siesta. This could be a clown fiesta, or this could be the return of both teams finally finding a clean and first, well, big win here on the LEC stage. Well, that's the hope, really. You want to see these teams shine like their players have shone in the past and show promise to do. We are going to jump on into picks and bans. Things like the Akali, Pantheon have been at the top of the ban list. The set there as well on day one. And already Schalke remove a Phalios from the pool. So let's have a look. I wonder if either team is going to look to take Syndra off the board or whether it will be something high priority. Schalke actually looking to ban away the Soraka. Um, not too surprising. Something that we've been seeing come out in the ban table a lot. Not many yesterday. teams can handle a medic, Vedius. It's true. Not it's many very, very teams true. can. You do need a lot of training. Uh, the set ban, you already talked about it. Syndra also going to come out from Schalke. So we're looking at a potential Jarvan. First pick for Lorox. Yep. He did play that yesterday. Put it in my tried to put him on something comfortable, easy to engage on, good scaling into the late game with Gragas taken off the board. That is one of the safest blind picks. Alternatively, you could go for the Misfortune or the center, both are open as well. The Gibbon hasn't had the best of performances on the center so far. Maybe put him on something a little bit more traditional like the MF, give him that ability to carry in the laning phase, and that's what's gonna be locked in. You also take it away from Crown Shot. The man has had three Misfortune games and two Aphelios games, which means that his champion pool has now been removed. Yep. Uh, we'll see what else he can bring out, whether it will be the center, maybe the Varus, but it looks like it's going to be the center for now. And SK actually going to prioritize the Lee Sin. This is something that Trick has played a lot of in the past. I actually don't think he's played it yet this split, though. And uh, we're going to see how he can perform on it as he goes up against his former team in Schalke. Yeah, you are correct in thinking he hasn't played it yet this split. Uh, it will be the first time for him in Spring 2020. And now we'll see where Lorox, Lorox sorry, decides to go. Uh, I think we're going to see a uh, jungle plus Orn pick here. Okay. If we're uh, talking... Oh, sorry. I've been looking at SK. Now. SK is the team that typically prioritizes the Orn. So I wonder if Schalke will look to try and take that one away or perhaps they have something prepared because SK could look to just grab that one up and then save the Tom catch pick uh, later on to pair it up with the center. Yeah, as you say, Sakura has four out of his five games so far this split on that Orn. Rumble will be the lock for Odo, one of his well-known picks, one of his legacy picks. And we'll see if SK decides to go for that Orn. Of course, it can be flexed, but I understand why you'd immediately go towards Odo because he's the player that you think of when you see this Rumble pick. And when we look at the composition, we're seeing a lot of teamfight presence come out from Schalke already. The Misfortune and the Rumble offer a huge mid-game power spike, and they're very versatile in what they can offer in the early to mid-game. But there's the Orn. We were talking about it. Yeah, really, really difficult prediction <laughs> to make. Uh, could have been the GP, side of, It could have been, been that one GP game that he's played. Look, Looks like he's going back to comfort, as it were. Um, but SK going for a little bit more on the scaling aspect. You have Senna, very strong in the late game, thanks to a very long range. On top of the fact you have easy engage with the Orn. Both junglers very early game focused. So now we're looking for things like mid laners, and we're looking for things uh, like the support as well. Time Genj has to be a high priority. I wouldn't be surprised to see Schalke ban that one away. And Leona is something yep. you have to consider. Uh, Schalke will want to get their hands on to give it a strong matchup alongside the Misfortune. Having MF Leona in that bottom lane, even into a center who can use that Curse of the Black Mists, it's actually still quite easy to hit both your Solar Flare and your Zenith Blade because you know Senna's always sitting right in the middle of that big, big black circle. The Braum is the first band from Schalke. It's a defensive support. There's the Gangplank from SK alongside the Cassio. I do want to bring the thought into your mind that Orn can be flexed down to true. support, of Very course. True. Uh, but with Sacre having played it so many times this split, I you mean, expect we see, it to be top. We see it mid lane more than we see it support, my true, friend. True, uh, true, we've true. seen it as an answer to a lot of very aggressive mid lane champions. Speaking of things like the Yasuo, the Pantheon, all still been left up and available, but I don't think they're going to be a high priority for now. SK are expecting this Rumble to actually be in the mid lane. They did ban away the Gangplank just in case. Um, but of course, they ban away the Cassio as well. So kind of covering all their bases, yeah. it seems like. Uh, of course, the Tom Kench ban did come through from Schalke. Wouldn't be surprised right now to see the Leona. I consider it a pretty solid pick into the Nautilus. Pairs it very well with Misfortune. And we get to see Dreams on an engaged champion. 
I like it a lot more when we actually get to see him be that facilitator, be one of the engaged tools, because one of the issues I think Schalke suffered from when they played with Gilius and they put him on these engaged champions was he wasn't able to find a lot of successful engages, and that responsibility often fell on Odo. We'll see if things change up as he actually decides to lock in the Thresh. Uh, Thresh is still like pseudo engage, a landing hook. So if you can start sure. off a team fight, although you don't have that big go button in the form of a solar flare. I do like Dreams on the Thresh. He played it a couple of times last year, or once last year. Didn't win on it, but uh, maybe he'll win this time. And alongside that, <laughs> maybe. Schalke, <laughs> I mean, Schalke don't have a great record of winning so far, That's so true. I don't want to be too positive about it. The Aatrox is the final pick for Schalke Null Fear. We'll see where SK go with their last pick. So final pick, the Rumble they now know is in the mid lane. Of course, Aatrox can still be flexed. And SK, they're hovering a couple of options. The Mordecai is a very flexible pick as well. And it looks like that they are going to answer with that in the mid lane for Gen X. And it will likely be the Rumble into this Mordecai at mid. I wonder what sort of build we'll see from the Rumble, whether we'll see the uh, Going B Predator roaming Rumble or whether we'll see the more conventional uh, that we often see in the mid lane with things like the Comet as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, Schalke, I think that they've drafted themselves a pretty solid mid-game comp. I think they have a lot of options, a lot of control in the early laning phase. They should be able to get push in top, mid, and even bot in the early game, which should give Lorox a lot of options. But I think that the scaling advantage should edge towards SK. They have long-range engage, they have a lot of damage coming out from center, and because of the Mordekaiser being able to remove a target from the, the yep. fight, you also have a very solid and reliable front line with which the center can play around. The question is, will SK be able to get there? And Perhaps that's one of the best strategies going up against Schalke because they struggled so often to actually close out games and get those good leads. Um, maybe just drafting for scaling is the best bet against them. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. So far this split, Schalke have averaged minus 1,300 gold at the 15 minute mark. So if you're planning to scale into any team, a team that tends to be at a deficit early on, it's a good team to do it against. Schalke with the mid game comp, pushing lanes, pressure for Lorox if he wants to utilize it. SK looking for the side of scaling. They do have some uh, early game because they've got the least in. He can mitigate some of that pressure, but a lot of scaling on the side of SK. Already picked up a win, of course, this split. Schalke sitting at 0-5 at the bottom of the standings with Vitality. A win today, perhaps, well, it would be a good sign for the team. I'm not going to say it would be the start of a run of wins for them. Well, let's also not forget that SK's only win was against Vitality, yep. which was in the first week of the split as well. And I feel like that Schalke, SK and Vitality sit at the bottom of the league right now, um, trying to avoid that last place spot. And every win is very important. You know, we're three awesome. weeks in. It's one of those things where if you're trading wins back and forth, going one and one, then that chance of playoffs is very realistic. But you know, even though we're only in week three, you start, you have to start having that conversation because if you come out of it zero and six, then that road to climb back up becomes very, very challenging. Definitely does. Uh, early doors, both, uh, both teams are just spread out across the map. No real fights happening as of yet. I do want to point out the Oracle's lens sitting on limit. You usually see this on supports when they want to go for a late invade, and that seems to be what SK are setting up for. Dreams is in position to place a ward. I don't believe he's placed one as of yet, but the ward up here by the Razorbeaks tends to be how you make sure you don't get invaded without any knowledge of it. it looks like the delayed invade is definitely coming through from SK. Ooh. Dreams didn't use the ward. No, he's not going to do it. But it looks like the Rek'Sai is starting on the top side anyway. Going to have a bit of a pull from Odo Amne. The question is, will they be aware of this? The ping is coming down. You'll see the positioning of Dreams will keep vision. And so he should be able to spot yep. out SK. Doesn't need to spend the uh. ward. Um, and the sweep will end up being wasted. No benefit gain. Of course, SK will be able to confirm that there is no vision here, but Schalke have the information that they need. Their red buff is being stolen. Lorox can use this as an opportunity to immediately move towards the enemy red buff and take that one away. Look as well in the mid lane. Immediate push comes out from our Dargate. In the top lane as well, Odo Amne is going to be in a position to push and assist his jungler should he need it. So everything is safe and sound to allow Lorox to take this for free. Yeah, it feels very easy for Lorox because, as you said in Pick and Ban, they have pushing lanes in the top and in the mid lane. If your team can respond quicker, this sort of invade is pretty easy for you to do. Of course, what has now happened is SK have effectively split the map. So now what Trick is going to be doing is he'll be spending a lot of his time towards the bot side, and we can already see a gank is looking to happen. Here comes Trick, they're going on Forgiven straight away. The Ignite is taking Forgiven flashes away. Trick on the chase, but he's gonna get the kill underneath the tower. Dream's unable to save his AD carry. Absolutely horrendous play from the Schalke bot lane. I was just about to talk about... Talk blah blah blah. <laughs> I was just about to talk 
about the fact that Trick has split the map. He's on the bot side. Yeah. You know he's just invaded your red buff, and you have to play defensively because, hey, your jungler isn't there. The enemy jungler is. This is basically 101, and Forgiven and Dreams get engaged on. They give away their lives. They have no summoner spells. This bot lane already falling to disaster three minutes in. Losing so many minions to that turret as well. Odo pressuring up here on the top side, but really the game, it, it's not often you can say it can be decided by moments like this, but this is such a big misplay from Shalka. No summoners left on this bot lane. Now, admittedly, the wave is obviously in a very awkward spot, but you're in this situation where you just have to respect <laughs> that you can get ganked this early on, and they don't. Forgiven refused to give up the farm. He refused to just play defensively, and he ends up losing his life as a result. I mean, I'll get flashing forward straight into Genax, who pulls him back with the Death's Grasp, but Trick is already gone, and Shalka have actually found a couple of kills here very quickly. Abadaga gets one on the board. Genax trying to trade in. Here comes Crown Shot looking for the damage on Dreams. Dreams rooted up with the last embrace. Genax almost falling as well. Lorlox going back in, but won't find the connection. Ends up being a two for one trade in the jungle. All right, Medic, I'm starting to get an idea of what kind of game this is going to be I now. Am too, <laughs> All right, so. Let me find our clown hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the early shenanigans in the bot lane, it appears that we have some action in the river. So what happens exactly? We can see that Trick tries to contest Lurox, who is not in a position to really uh, force this from Trick because it's much easier for Abadagi and Dreams to collapse. That's why they start this early skirmish off. They quickly get two kills, and they think that with this numbers advantage, they can turn this into a favorable trade. Of course, with the arrival of Crown Shot and the heal, that actually forces Abadagi to disengage. Perhaps he had a lot of his abilities on cooldown because he really didn't want to commit to that, allowing Genex to walk away with his life as well. So, ends up being two for two overall, even after the early deficit for him found himself in due to that, those shenanigans. He's now back in the laning phase. Crown Shot now has no summoner spells and uh, Schalke actually had the gold lead. There were three flashes left up in the entire game, Bedius. One on each of the top laners because, of course, they never impact the game. <laughs> and Limit has his as well. So, we'll see if Limit can use that in the bottom lane as he does get hooked by Dreams. You did mention in Pick and Ban you wanted to see Dreams on a more proactive champion who has engaged potential, and he's had a few engages so far. Trick is going to come up towards the top lane as Odawamne just walks away. Pretty easy for the Aatrox to escape. He's going to be aware of what the jungler is up to. Sakurai has been bullied a lot in this laning phase. Once he hits level 6 and... Well, when he changes to Ignite, he actually has a surprising amount of kill pressure and is a lane that SK could look to try and find an early gank with. You can see Trick still hovering around, wants to help Sakurai push in this wave, and this will give Sakurai the opportunity to go back to base. Yeah, just getting those recall timers off when you can. Always important, as you said, for given... Didn't actually get a kill or an assist in the lane, but has equalized that CS deficit he had earlier on. So, sitting on about... 130. Oh, he's just gone back and picked up a couple of items. So he was sitting on about 700, 800 gold there. And he's got himself double longsword. Wait, how has he just gone back? Did I just, did I totally mess that up? I didn't see the I'm double really longsword. Oh. Really okay, something happened there with the <laughs> double longsword. <laughs> Here it is in his inventory. <laughs> We're uh, using couriers now. We dota. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there, Medic. Let's just uh, casually slide past that one. As we can see, two items picked up for Forgiven. And a double longsword, gonna give him a bit of extra AD in the laning phase, will help his uh, trading at the very least. You can see that Rumble using the high wave clear to get push in the mid, and then he's gonna move down into the river to help maintain control for this early cloud Drake. That 10% alt cooldown reduction gonna be valuable for the team like Schalke, when you have ultimates like the Rumble ultimate, the uh, Misfortune ultimate, all very, very valuable indeed. But it's actually SK that are in a position to start this one off first, and Teleport will be up for Sakurai, won't be for Odoamne. Schalke should likely avoid trying to contest this one for now. Yeah, you don't really want to trade when you could be at a man disadvantage pretty quickly. That's the dragon. Two missed fragments for Crown Shot, and SK with the early objective. It's not something we've seen too much of them. Uh, from them across the course of the split. Both Schalke and SK have actually really struggled in the early game. And I think we were both wondering who would come out on top because you can see neither of them have high kills and assists at the 15 minute mark. Both of them tend to be behind in gold at the 15 minute mark and neither of them are very good at taking dragons either. So it's a little bit of a battle it's, at the bottom of the table. It's almost like we have a, an eighth and a ninth place team battling against each other. I just like to <laughs> highlight sometimes that yeah, I mean, they like, struggled. The, uh, the numbers kind of speak for themselves, as you rightly said. And uh, honestly, no one's really winning right now. It's still very close. So both of them kind of both beating and also keeping their record at the same time. 
Schrodinger's game. <laughs> Until we get to the end of it, both teams are both winning and losing. Okay, so Vedi. We're eight minutes in. We've seen both teams have four rays, have attacks in towards the enemy team. But I'm really thinking about what happens next. Schalke, we talked about them having this mid-game spike, having pressure at those two items or so. We'll see if they can utilize that because Amarage hasn't been roaming much from this mid lane on the Rumble, has hit the level seven, but isn't going Predator, so isn't looking to impact the rest of the map. I want to see Schalke trying to take some fights soon. Otherwise, you wonder if the scaling from SK will just come in, come into effect. Uh, I don't think they need to be... By too... soon, I mean the next yeah. 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, a... that's not really the definition of soon, <laughs> but I realized when I, <laughs> I said soon, say, that's yeah. not the word I should have used. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing you don't speak for a living. Um, now... Schalke, well, that fight that you're looking for may be happening soon. They're Betty. taking it this soon, This is when you start to build the tension. Ooh. The dramatic music begins to cue. Are we going camping? Because this is intense right now. Really? That's how you build drama and suspense. I know no by fight making happened. A pun. <laughs> I knew no fight was going to happen. <laughs> okay, so Lolox gets the Rift Tower for free. SK didn't want to take that fight. Yeah, so they're going to walk away with the Rift Herald. Um, of course, the Drake wasn't alive, so it couldn't be traded in that side of the map. Now, the question is, where will Schalke look to use this Rift Herald? They do have a wave stacked up top, but Uruamne is going to use that as an opportunity to reset. Something that Schalke could do is actually invest it towards the bot side of the map to try and free Forgiven and Dreams from this two versus two, start moving this bot lane around a little bit more, try and get some gold into the back pocket of this misfortune. And given that the bot side camps are up for Lorox, that is likely the direction that he will be heading in in the near future. Seems like you are right on the money there. Schalke do actually have a couple of control wards here that will spot Limit out as he comes towards the mid lane. Limit maybe going to try and clear this one out. Does have to be a little bit cautious, but Nautilus, of course, with the dredge line, can just hook his way away. Even steals away the Scryer's Bloom. It's something I love doing as support. Nesgar's not quite going to connect here in the mid lane, but Genex yeah, still has the ultimate. Even if Abadage is winning out the trade. So, Medic, you'll notice that Abadage is rushed early Sork Boots. Obviously, early magic penetration on Rumble, very valuable. But by getting the Tier 2 Boots as well, the extra movement speed that you get allows you to sidestep a lot of the skill shots that Mordecai tries to hit on you. So, I like the early purchase. And again, you're seeing it. Every time that E comes out from Gen X, it's going to be sidestepped by Abadage. And he's going to get a lot of these favorable trades out. And uh, one of the great things about Rumble as well is uh, you can just push the wave while also harassing. So, you force your opposition into a very awkward situation where if they miss those skill shots, it's always going to hurt you a lot more than you originally think. You can see Lorox and Abadage coming up here towards the top lane. Sakure being very defensive, looking to clear out the wave as much as he can, but this appears like it might be a Rift Herald use in the top lane. You want to get as many plates yes. down as possible before you put the Rift Herald in. Sakure is going to step forward now knowing that the rumble is not on his way. It lands the knockoff onto Lorox, but that Rift Herald is just going to get a charge off and it should be able to take at least a couple of plates off the turret. So they're going to put the gold into Odo Amne. The weight is going to fall on the Aatrox's back. Still not too bad. He's going to spike hard in the mid game. Uh, ooh, so you oh, see a hook flash. flash hook. Abadage still has his flash put into the realm of death and now flashes away, but Genex is going to lock him in place for the moment. Dreams on his way as well as here comes Forgiven and the fight really begins in the mid lane as the equalizer comes out. Limit goes gold and one down already as Abadage falls. Forgiven's going to get to Lantern, but here comes the TP. Dredge line doesn't quite connect. Odo's joining the fight from the top side. That's another one for Schalke. They equalize the scoreboard, but here comes Crown Shot. Is Odo going to overstep because it's Sakurai pushing forward with the Bellows breath. Death's grass not connecting. Last embrace does though. Sakurai pulled in. He pops his stopwatch. The kick away. Dreams. Well, Trick gave him a route to safety and Dreams gets pulled back, has to flash. Ends up being a one-for-one one in the mid lane. Tense fight between the two teams. As you rightly said, Medic, only one death on both sides, but the Dragon is about to spawn in nine seconds. It looks like Schalke have the slightly healthier team, but no, they're deciding not to go for it for now. They're going to look to reset, spend some of the gold, and you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, Janax picking up the Proto Belt as well. Uh, teleport is available for Abadage, so not the end of the world for him. He should be able to uh, rejoin the fray. So I'd really like to see Odo back, because he's sitting on about 1,300 gold and there's an Ocean Drake on the rift. If SK get the Ocean Drake, they're that much closer to the soul. It will either be an Infernal or a Mountain. And you can see, actually, it looks like Schalke have decided they don't want to fight around it. They don't want to go for it. But giving up this ocean with the intent of playing around the next few dragons when they hit those first item spikes, when they hit those two item spikes. Yeah, um, I do feel, though, that they could have been 
better positions to look to fight for those. Uh, I think that they haven't taken a great advantage of Odo Omni's teleport. They've heavily invested in keeping him in that 1v1 in the top lane. And of course, due to the early shenanigans that have been bought, Forgiven hasn't felt strong enough. So they've mainly just avoided these fights. Uh, but they're nearing the point where they should start to look for these uh, early engagements because we talk a lot about scaling. We talk about how later into the game it's going to be harder for Schalke to win these games, especially when you think about uh, they don't have the most reliable engage. A lot of it comes off the back of Dreams looking for a pick because yep. Rek'Sai is going to not be the great, greatest engage. And while a Rumble Ultimate is great, uh, as I speak about engage. Oh, Genex just TP'd in behind us. I would argue it really has nowhere to go. The Vittor is there, but he's already in the realm of death. Gen X will be able to chase him down. Abadage just oversteps. Yeah, tier two boots aren't going to help you this time, G uh, Abadage, as uh, Gen X does find a quick kill. Great use of the teleport. Should set them up to try and secure some plates in the bot side of the map as Lorox is looking to uh, intervene. But nice to see SK being a little bit proactive on the map. Not something that we normally see from this team. Usually much slower, and we heard it from Abada uh, Abadage. We heard it from Yamato on the desk when he talked about how. Uh, SK, they're a team that often watches the game happen around them, and uh, it's nice to see them make these kind of plays. Good deep teleport, very easy to come in from behind Abadage. He doesn't have his flash from the previous exchange. Lorox isn't close enough. Abadage thought he was safe because mid had prio, they had control of the river, but he doesn't quite see that ward behind him, and he ends up getting collapsed on. And uh, you can see what Abadage was thinking as you say, Lorox being nearby, but. Good teleport in. Does mean it's on cooldown, of course. Abadagas just used his to get back down towards the bottom lane. Odos is up if Schalke wants to take a fight in the ensuing minutes, but still a while before the next dragon is available. Rift Herald will be up in just a short while. I'll see if Schalke wants to go for the second Herald. Oh, great play from Trick as he lands the kickback underneath the turret. Now there's the route to chase. Oh, that was beautiful. That was sublime from Trick. Clean play there. Uh, little to break down. Trick with just a really good insect. Odo Omni didn't have his flash to get out of that one. I like the fact that Odo Omni used his ultimate as quickly as possible to get out of range of the turret, but the, the chain CC from the Nautilus and the Lee Sin was more than enough to find that kill. And now SK is still a little bit behind in gold. It's basically even now as we get to the 15 minute mark. Honors square between the two teams and the Rift Herald started up immediately by SK. They have the advantage on this top side. Now Odo has teleport. It looks like Shaka want to fight this. Yeah, but they are a man down. Odo does, as you rightly said, have the TP. Coming in. SK is split up. Trick's still on it. Saka's gonna land the knockback. The equalizer are coming out. Trick didn't have the smite. Looks like they get it. Trick will be able to jump out of this. And SK get away scot-free. Well, the awkward part there for Schalke was they tried to engage through this choke point, but because of the Orn ultimate, they actually couldn't get through it. So even though a teleport came through from Odo Omni and SK were split, Schalke couldn't actually commit to the fight. And this is what we talked about. Their engage isn't the strongest. If they don't land a hook, uh, if they don't find a good flank, Schalke actually can't really start a fight. Yeah. You know, we talked about maybe they could have gone for the Leona in the draft, offering that slightly stronger engage tool. But by putting themselves in this situation, it's a lot harder to force these mid-game fights that they're really looking for. And it's a weakness we've seen in Shaoku across the last few weeks, just that inability to, Frost Kuring was describing it yesterday as make a fist to punch someone. It feels like all of the fingers are working independently and they can't quite find the way to get all five fingers combined to actually land a knockout blow. Oh, that's, a, that's a good descriptor, yep. I quite like that. And uh, it's ironic because when you, when you look at SK, they're kind of a team that, that just kind of watches the fists from a distance. Yeah. So in theory, you have this team with someone watching someone trying to form a fist and they just awkwardly look <laughs> at each other. Um, but for now, SK have been in the driver's seat for the majority of the game, still in the gold deficit though. Of course, that is because Schalke have just secured themselves a tower. With SK's Rift Herald, they should be able to equalize this just a little bit. And with the dragon spawning in about 40 seconds, We'll see which teams look to contest. I think Schalke should try to force it because that's their best avenue of coming back. I say coming back into the game. We're trying to utilize the strengths of their comp. Uh, and I think it's really important that they try and look for these fights as soon as possible because it's only going to get harder the later the game goes. Clock is ticking for Schalke. As you say, the dragon about to spawn. Rifteld used in the bot lane to add a little bit of pressure down here. That charge should be able to take it out alongside the crown shot, just getting a couple of auto attacks in when he can making sure that Shelly gets her charge in. The turret falls, and now we'll see. Schalke, we saw them try and fight around the last Rift Herald. Here, they have to up the tempo. They have to do something. Lorox going in. Great flash. Crown shot in the Black Mist. We'll get us away. 
And Crash Up burns both summoners. Will SK give up the ghost on the dragon? Will they say, we don't need to fight it, we're two up? Or will they just get mid prior and go for the turret instead? I think that's the easier play for SK. It won't be the fastest, of course, because of Senna. Oh, actually, they're kind of dividing and conquering right now. Schalke have decided to hold on to the mid tower as the Drake goes down. Lorux, of course, no flash. So while he could commit to this, there may no be escape route for him. Here comes Sakura with the ult. Sakura looking for the call of the Forge God, but a great hook from Dreams puts him out of his equalizer. Not too well placed as SK push towards the Dragon. Trick gets it, third of the game for them. And now Lorux is in the middle of SK. He's going to be able to back away. Sakura forced off towards the top side. Janax in the realm of death. Hook doesn't quite connect, but SK will sacrifice him. One man down, but a dragon in their pocket. Schalke could not go for the steal because Genax used the ultimate to lock Lorox out of that option. This does bring SK to three drakes, but SK lose their mid laner and they may lose this mid tower. Let's see if Crown Shot can hold the line. The issue for Schalke is they just can't take these turrets. They just can't take these objectives quickly enough. Still waiting on the first completed item from Abadage. Looks like he went Oblivion Orb and then is going towards a Leandris instead of completing the Morello Nomicon. I'm sure some LCK commentators will be very happy with that decision. Not a huge amount of healing. Wait, wait, wait. From the side of SK. He hasn't finished the item yet. We'll see. <laughs> I'm giving him the <laughs> benefit of the doubt. There's still time. <laughs> There's still, still time. time to disappoint Anyway, MS. so. Uh, you talked about the hook uh, from Dreams to interrupt that engage. Very well played by him. And then keep your eyes on Lorox. He's going to get ulted by Genax, preventing him from stealing that one away. At this point, SK have decided, okay, let's just disengage. We need to fight them now. Genax tries to run away, but then the Realm of Death ends. He flashes, but then a good knockup from Odo Omni interrupts any opportunity for escape. So Shark will walk away with the kill. Do have the gold advantage still. But again, SK, three Drakes working yeah. towards that fourth will be the mountain. Offering that uh, big shield and also offering a, a couple more resistances to the already pretty tanky SK line. I'll be honest, I'm very glad that we've had this pace of dragons uh, quite quickly consecutively after each other because I was worried that we'd get to a game where, you know, two dragons to either team, it keeps going and keeps going. 20 minutes later, you get towards the soul, you get towards the elder dragon. But with I mean, SK keeping the tempo up like this, you expect it to be a slightly more rapid affair. I mean, we talked about it, right? Uh, in the draft, we. Maybe the best thing to do against Shalker is just draft scaling because they haven't showcased an ability to get a lead yeah. and they also haven't showcased an ability to close out a game, which means that maybe if you just play for the late game and just wait, uh, you're guaranteed to get to that point. And Schalke's in a position now where they need to try and force these fights, but they don't have the strongest tools in order to do it. Uh, so the question is, will SK actually then try to force these late game fights? Because this has also been an issue for them in the past. That's true. That's true. Maybe they'll hope that Schalke will try and set up plays like this. Sakura going in. Dawning Shadow will heal him up just a tad. You can see the damage coming out, and Lorwok's going to jump in, but he's underneath the turret. Lorwok is dead. That's one. Sakura gets the outplay. He's going to burn for it. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the bullet time came out. It's forgiven. Picks up a kill onto Crown Shot. Maybe Crown Shot distracted by the play in the bot side. Two for one so far in favor of Schalke. Teleport coming in towards this mid lane turret as it's Genax joining the party, but Odo Amre has actually caught out Trick now as Trick jumps away with the safeguard. Ends up being two for one overall as Schalke try and make plays on two sides of the map. Yeah, a lot of uh, small skirmishes happening across the board. I think the top tower also went down in that exchange, which of course Schalke is going to immediately equalize. Still sitting on the gold lead for now, even if it is a small one. And uh, once we get the replay, we'll see exactly what happened in the mid lane because I'm really fascinated as to how Crown Shot died in that situation. So, of course, he does have no flash available to him. Yeah, my Dreams invested his, so I assume it was flash a flash. Play. Flash play flash is my play. thought. Well, let's see. You're predicting Flash Flay? There it is. Support main Always knows flavor. what it is. There's no point flashing if you're going to, like, flash hook. You don't need to it's predict true. it. He hasn't got flash. It's very true, Medic. This is why you're Hit him with the main. Flay. Yeah, and he does. Finds the kill. Crown Shot ends up losing his life. Mid tower still alive, though. Leandri's now completed for Abadage. And uh, that's going to offer him a lot of damage. Big item power spike for the Rumble. Also level 13, so he'll have uh, five points in both his Q and E. And so right now, Schalke feels very happy, feels very strong. Infinity Edge done on the Misfortune as well. Like, these are all the power spikes you want to be seeing. If you're a Schalke fan, you're like, oh, we're tough, we're strong, but we have no fear. I mean, yes, that good one, Medic. You're nice one. full of them today, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's one of those days, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, uh, but they have to find a good fight. Their best bet is the Drake, which is spawning in 45 seconds. SK already investing vision around this area of the map. You can see the bot lane is being pushed in right now. Uh, 
for Jack. So he's going to push this one in, happy as can be. Mid lane is going to be hard to get priority, but it doesn't matter because they're using this pressure in order to get this deep vision in in the bot side jungle. And then uh, free of any contention from Shalka, who's invested a little bit more into the top side, Shalka's going to have to invest their five men to force their way through the river now. That's what they're going to do. There is a TP ward behind for Odoam if he wants to get there. It's all the way down towards the bottom lane, though, which is a long, long way away, as Venius very kindly highlights it for me. SK cleared out a lot of the vision. Genax standing. Bodyguard. Stalwart. Strong. Death's grass. Going to pull back Lorox, but not going to be able to find the connection they want. Two seconds on the mountain, and this is how you build the tension, Venius. Could be the deciding fight. You feel if that Infer uh, the Mountain Soul goes over to SK, it could be done, though. Ooh, ult already Shalka. gone for Dreams, though. He was trying to catch Sakre out, but you can't. Ah, but SK is now Come split in. up. You can see that Shalker actually have priority in the river. Here we go. Here we Sakre go. still Dreams. has the ult, though. Hook. Bellow's Breath comes out. Odoame is going to try... Oh, that Equalizer is going to separate them. Crown shot and limit off towards the top side. Johnny Shadow comes out as the Dragon resets. Lorox in the Realm of Death, but Odoamne is going to be kicked away. Trick trying to take it before Lorox can get back in. Limit off towards the top side is fighting. He's just acting as a bouncer, acting as a bodyguard. Lorox steals it away for Shalka, and now the fight continues. Lorox with a double knockup. The shutdown coming out. It's forgiven who's gone down. They're chasing onto Crown Shot, but Abadaga is going to go down as well. Odoamne getting chased, but the hook from Dreams will not save him today. It's an ace for SK. Shalka, you got the Mountain Drake, but at what cost? And SK just clean their way through Schalke Null Fear. They have their eyes set on the Baron now, and there is no one standing in their way. SK trying to separate themselves from the bottom of the pack. And they seem to be doing it well. We'll have another look at this fight, because at moments it looked like Schalke had the upper hand. So Schalke don't use that flank ward as it's disappeared, which means they go straight from front to back. They think that they've zoned Crown Shot and Limit off, but the Rumble Ultimate doesn't do that much damage to Crown Shot, and Lorx is just forced to dance around the fight because of the Mordecai as an ultimate. Then we see Trick having his uh, having the dragon stolen away. Misfortune realizes she's in a 1v1 because she's not getting any peel, and then Amadage gets locked up as Crown Shot just kites him back, and you're actually seeing how easy it is for SK to kite out this composition from Schalke and how hard it is for them to get the team fight that they want. They just don't have the setup and they end up losing a Baron as a result. Great stuff all around from SK. Credit to Crownshot as well, surviving for a long time in that fight. Now has the Molten Edge, the ornament of the Infinity Edge. That upgraded item, uh, Abyssal Mask and Sunfire Cape complete for Sacre as well. It's not a huge amount of items he can upgrade. Oh, the Black Cleaver's there, but it looks like there's going to be a Locket of the Iron Solari coming out from Limits to add one more to the pool. And uh, now with the Baron buff, this pressure is going to be pretty unbearable for Schalke. They're 3,000, 2,500 gold behind. And uh, SK will see if they can use this advantage. You talked about it earlier. They have the scaling comp, but you do still have to use that composition well. Yeah, let's see what they actually do with the Baron. Because this is it's one of the dangerous parts of a game when uh, you have an objective like Baron and then you aren't able to push or generate any advantages with it. You can actually see Sakre. Oh, he was looking for a TP opportunity, I think. That's why that he froze in the lane. Lord, Shaka looking to collapse now. Equalizer comes out. Genex uses the proto belt to get away, but I'm sorry, Genex. Even with the Realm of Death, I don't know if you survived this one. Lands are good obliterate. What about that? Not quite getting the Death Grass now. Sacre, oh, they've turned straight on him, but the Dawning Shadow. Sacre's already got one. They're looking for more. SK were quick to react to the play from Schalke, and Schalke's dreams and their hopes just shatter before their very eyes. But given channels the bullet time, but he can't survive. Not a single member of SK has died in the last two fights. Nine from Schalke have. Well, turns out that you don't need to do anything if you just wait for your opponents <laughs> to make the play instead. They killed up SK. the fist for a long time, yeah, but yes. <laughs> SK were able to respond in kind and it went heavily in their favor. They now just group up bot. They have their eyes set on the bot lane inhibitor. And they have their eyes set on the game. Schalke crumbling under the pressure of SK. It's a lot easier to do something with the Baron buff when there's no one on the enemy team to stop you. The inhibitor tower in the bottom lane will be broken open. The inhibitor short to follow, you have to feel. There it goes. 6,000, almost 7,000 gold lead for SK at the 27 minute mark. It's all done but the singing here, Vedius. So, let's have a look. Abadage. He's thinking, okay, we can get the collapse here. The problem is, it's never really a collapse, because when you think you have a numbers advantage, Genax goes, well, 
Let's have a 1v1. Uh, he has a four level advantage. So even though he doesn't land all of his abilities, Lorix is like, I'm still losing this. And of course, yeah, he's now able to disengage, but Sakurai TP is in from behind. The rest of SK start to collapse. And you can see that Lorix doesn't have the HP as Sakurai melts through him. And the rest of SK arrive to just obliterate Shalke. They Very almost got tricked. They almost got tricked. Almost, but not enough. Former Schalke man, of course, was the jungler that took them from seventh to third in summer split last year. And now we'll be uh, trying to work some of his magic on SK, because Schalke, ah, they're struggling. They are struggling. Static ship finished now for Forgiven. A little bit more I wave mean, clear. You say struggling. I mean, I would say that it's been a, an utter disappointment considering the amount of excitement and hype that existed around this roster, especially coming in. Analysts even rating them as A tier. And I can understand why they would do it, because this was like a feast or famine roster, right? Coming into the split, you expect them to go hard, you expect them to go fast, and maybe towards the end, sure, they deteriorate. Sure, maybe they're not a top three team, but expectations were not over the analysts, but many fans were like, the return of Forgiven, this is it. Yeah. And uh, I feel like so far, all this team has showcased is uh, a disappointing performance. Currently, been unable to force any of these early game plays. Uh, getting killed at level one. <laughs> and now the Dragon Soul is on the table. Can Schalke find a Miracle Steal? It looks like they're not even going to try. SK will secure themselves the Soul. Mountain Soul for SK. And Betty, I agree with you. Schalke have been a disappointment. I'll be honest, I'm holding out hope. We've had null fear, we've had null fump. I'm holding out hope for the null act sin at the end of the split. We'll see if they can get there. Wait. My, ger my German's not very good. <laughs> Zero <laughs> eighteen. Is what but uh, looks like null null six is on its way pretty soon. Yep, Elder Dragon Baron up as well very very soon. That will likely be the objective that SK look for. Let, let's look at it from the other side though, because that obviously Shalka have been disappointed. But SK in this game is it Gen X that you want to really focus in on? <laughs> uh, yes. I keep accidentally pressing the button. <laughs> <laughs> but SK this game have looked like they played around their their power points well. They played. It's still reactionary. I, mean, I, feel like, I feel like SK have just kind of punished the mistakes from Shalke. But yeah, but you have to do that, right? I mean, for sure. I mean, but it's, it's a very classic SK way of playing, I okay. would say. You know, like they did the same thing against Vitality when um, I would say that they, they still haven't showcased to me to be the most proactive team, which again, isn't the worst thing in the world when you're playing more of a scaling comp. I like a lot of their setups. I think that Trick and Limit are working pretty well together. Like we can already see them setting up, denying this vision. There's a little bit of vision still left over, but that's fine. That's going to fade out very soon. And uh, what we're likely going to see is SK look for a quick... They'll push out the waves. They should look for another reset to restock on their vision. Uh, and then they can actually look to start off this Drake. It is a little bit slow, of course, because they are running the center. But still, at the very least, they'll either get themselves a fight or they'll get themselves a Baron. Oh, we'll see which one it is. Schalke trying to poke their heads in, but really unable to find anything as of yet. And uh, of course, uh, the Baron is sped up ever so slightly if Gen X is there by the Leandries with okay. that uh, sense health damage, but they don't need it. They were to sneak in past this ward. Pings coming out from SK and pings from Schalke, but right now they, they don't know what's going on. It's a very slow Baron, but it's fast enough. Yeah, it doesn't matter how fast it is if the enemy team doesn't ever get anywhere near you. Here they come. Schalke on the warpath. Back to their base. They, they can't get anywhere near it. is oh. a good bodyguard. Gen X is there as a bouncer as well. Great stuff from SK. 6,000 gold lead at the 31 minute mark. Two lanes left to push in if they want them. And with Baron buff and the Mountain Soul in their favor, you have to think it's going to be done pretty soon. Yeah. So now we just got to look for SK to end the game. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that is what I've been looking for, yeah. I'll be honest. I mean, it should be pretty easy, right? Crown shot's really strong. Uh, yeah. He has decided to go for Zerka Grease. I know that's a very, very controversial topic yeah, right now. Yeah, there's a big, there's that's, a big con You only get I five see, extra attacks. I see a lot of people saying like, no, it's fine. And other people being like, no, it's useless. You know, Ionian Boots of Lucidity is the most common yeah. that I usually see on a center. But, oh, fight. Will it happen? Both lands on side. Will it will happen? The question is whether Shalka can actually put up any sort of fight at all. Bullet time comes out, really doesn't do too much. Sakura's going to land the knockup. Trick trying to get all the way on the back line. That was beautiful from Trick. Jumps all the way into the base, but Forgiven is still alive. Abadage goes golden off towards the top side. Forgiven has to run back to the base. abadage has gone, and this is SK pushing in. The fight happened, Vedius. There were some cool plays in the midst of it, but it was as done as we thought it was. SK now on the Nexus Towers. Forgiven, no summoners, no 
way of getting into the fight. Dreams tries to go forward, but he is smacked down with a mace. And uh, Janax looking for a couple more kills on the Fountain if he can find them. Not going to be able to get there. That will be the game. SK. They're, they're pulling a bit of a G2 here, guys. Come on. You're, you're not as good as G2. Just finish the game, SK. <laughs> you're not, oh, a, you're oh, not oh, on their level. Oh. There we are. SK get their second wing of Swing Split. Not holding any punches there, were you, mate? <laughs> just, just right in the gap. All right. Well, SK, pretty commanding victory. Um, we talked a lot about how they went for more of a scaling approach. Uh, they punished the early mistakes from Schalke well. There was a bit of skirmishing, there was a bit of back and forth, but when it came to that big team fight around the Drake, that was really where they cemented their control over the game. Finding a big ace followed by another big ace is uh, really what cemented the game for SK and definitely a momentum swing. They're going to end week three with a win, yeah. currently sitting at two and four. Um, oh, you take those. You take those every day of the week. Schalke, of course, will 